A reward is being offered after several street signs and mailboxes in Mercer County have been damaged. Six fires in a little more than two months, destroying homes and campers in three eastern Kentucky counties. And police think they're all arson cases. And drivers heading south into Tennessee have a much easier route tonight. Some lanes of Interstate 75 reopened after a rock slide. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening to you. A stretch of spring-like weather continues across the bluegrass, but Thursday could be wet for many of us. Well, let's check in now with our chief meteorologist, Chris Bailey. He's tracking some rain. We get, begin tonight with your no-wait weather forecast, Chris. Guys, big pipeline of moisture setting up from the Gulf of Mexico, actually from the Pacific crossing Mexico and into the Gulf, and that is aimed right toward the western part of Kentucky right now, where flooding is ongoing. This is a massive flood event, by the way, for parts of Arkansas, down into Texas and Louisiana. And numerous warnings are out, basically from western Kentucky all the way to the Gulf of Mexico in a continuous line. The moisture plume right now aimed toward western Kentucky, but later tonight and into the day tomorrow, we're going to see that slowly working its way toward the east. So second half of the day especially, we'll get that line of showers and thunderstorms and may actually catch a little bit of a line of showers and storms first thing tomorrow morning most of central and eastern Kentucky precipitation free today had a little rain grazing us to the north and west though the hour by hour forecast trying to bring in a little band of some rain first thing tomorrow morning that would then lift its way on to the north. Notice how southeastern Kentucky stays mainly dry into the first half of tomorrow. Your temperatures are going to be much warmer, southeastern Kentucky. Coming up in a few minutes, a new hour by hour is in that will bring in rounds of rain and thunderstorms, but I'll also show you why parts of eastern Kentucky have a shot at 80 tomorrow. Forecast at 11 12. They say that all signs point to vandalism. Tonight, the Mercer County Sheriff's Office says nearly two dozen road signs and mailboxes have been destroyed around the county. And replacing all of them isn't cheap, so now a reward has been offered in the case. New tonight, Monique Blair talked to someone whose mailbox was damaged. It's our top story at 11. She didn't know exactly what happened, but she heard a loud truck and then she heard a big bang. Um, and so that's evidently what they were doing. Exactly who is doing this is still a mystery, but Wednesday morning in the latest string of vandalism across the county, Denise Driscoll and several of her neighbors on Monday's landing woke up to damaged mailboxes. They smashed it here on this side and just kind of smashed it over. The front door was hanging off. Uh, the back was hanging down. He did a good job fixing it. Now, it's not only mailboxes that have been damaged, but also several street signs. You can see this stop sign out here on Warwick Road has pretty extensive damage to it. This was still standing, okay. but now our neighbors, I think they got their post and their mailbox. Mercer County Sheriff Ernie Kelty says at least 20 street signs and mailboxes have been mutilated. He says it appears some of them with an axe. So now the fiscal court, along with police, are offering up to a $1,500 reward for information that leads to the arrest and conviction of whoever is responsible. It is a big deal. I mean, you're, you're fooling with people's property. You're tearing up people's property that they work hard to pay for. So, I mean, it's not funny. It's not funny at all. You know, if these kids are out vandalizing people's property, they need to be at home. They need to find something better to do. In Mercer County, Monique Blair, WKYT. The sheriff says the road signs cost Mercer County $42 each, but that doesn't include the cost of resetting the signs. Tonight, state police need your help finding the people responsible for arsons in three eastern Kentucky counties. Since New Year's Day, police say six fires in Jackson, Lee, and Owsley counties have destroyed campers and even a few homes. Police say some of the fires may be connected. Garrett Weimer has an update on the investigation. Little is left now among ash and scrap, where a home once stood at the corner of two rural roads in Jackson County. State police say it's a similar picture. Five other places across the region. You know, we don't see that many fires in that small of a proximity just happen. Four fires destroyed campers and a shed at campgrounds on Shoemaker Ridge in Lee County. Another fire destroyed a home in rural Owsley County. As the number of fires grew in the days and weeks after the first two, investigators say it became increasingly obvious that it was arson. That came as no surprise to folks who live near what used to be this home in Jackson County. The circumstances sounded fishy to them the day of the fire a few weeks ago. 
when they say the house burned down just hours after someone who lived there was kicked out. In Lee County, police believe the fires on Shoemaker Ridge could be connected. Two happened in the same day, three on the same property, belonging to out-of-town owners who bought it as a weekend getaway. Nobody wants to lose their property, uh, you know, and, and obviously that makes you feel really uncomfortable about even going back to the area. If you know that somebody intentionally burned your property, uh, you know, you never know what could actually come next. In Jackson County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. State police say arson cases are often solved thanks to tips people have called in. The arson task force is offering a $1,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest and a conviction for any of those fires. New tonight, firefighters trying to figure out what caused a fire that destroyed an eastern Kentucky business. The fire started overnight at Joe's Meat Market on Highway 30 East in Owsley County. These are eyewitness videos from the scene. Firefighters say they called in help from Lee County to put out the fire. They say they did save some buildings on the property, but this afternoon, firefighters say part of the fire rekindled and they had to go back to the business to put that out. New tonight, a Lexington women's clinic being sued by the state has stopped performing abortions for now. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, EMW Women's Clinic on Burt Road is waiting until a judge rules next week on the state's request for the clinic to stop abortions. A lawsuit filed by Governor Bevin's administration claims the clinic has been performing abortions without a license. State investigators also claim the clinic had expired medicine and some unsanitary conditions. Tonight, investigators are trying to figure out what led to an accidental shooting that badly injured a well-known Pulaski County businessman. Ward Carell is now listed in critical condition at UK Hospital. Police say he was at his Pulaski County home alone overnight when they believe he accidentally shot himself. But they're not sure why he was handling a gun at the time. When the EMS units arrived, the residence was locked from the inside, so they were forced to uh, make entry into the residence. Correll is known in southern Kentucky for building Cumberland Lake Shell and other businesses. Pulaski County leaders say he's often given back to the community. New tonight, a woman accused of killing her ex-boyfriend in Marion County says she's not guilty. 33-year-old Brandy Roth answered to a murder charge this morning. She's being held on a $1 million cash bond. On Monday, police say she shot 48-year-old Timothy Hahn at his home in the St. Francis community. Hahn's family claims after the shooting, Roth ransacked the house, then tried to steal his truck. It was cold-blooded murder for her to shoot him that many times and then steal his truck and his guns. She had no remorse. Timothy Hahn's family says Roth, Roth once lived with him, but he kicked her out several months ago. New tonight, investigators say a truck stolen from a Whitley County business later turned up in Georgia. The Whitley County Sheriff's Office charged 43-year-old Hobart Ellswick with theft. Deputies say the truck was stolen from Edgewood Mobile Homes February 18th. They say police in Georgia later arrested Ellswick for shoplifting at a store, and they found the truck outside that business. Deputies say Ellswick used to work for Edgewood Mobile Homes. Well, the wait is finally over. Tonight, a nearly 20-mile stretch of southbound Interstate 75 reopened in Tennessee. Crews removed barriers for the southbound lanes near Jellicoe about 7 tonight. On February 26th, the Tennessee Department of Transportation closed all the lanes of Interstate 75 there just south of the Kentucky state line because of a rock slide. The northbound lanes of I-75 there are still closed in that area as crews continue to work to stabilize the hill where the rock slide happened. But they do expect to have at least one northbound lane reopened by March 24th. Democratic presidential candidates Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders met for another debate tonight, and immigration was one of the key topics. That's in nine minutes. And then a community remembering the lives lost in a Kentucky coal mine disaster that happened 40 years ago today. Lexington's water rates are some of the highest in the country, and your bill could be rising even more. Why the water company wants to increase your rates for the fifth time in 10 years. The rising cost of water, Thursday at 6 on WKYT. Kentucky mornings start here. Breaking and overnight news, weather to plan your day, plus traffic you can take with you. Make WKYT this morning part of your Kentucky morning. Weekdays from 4.30 to 7 on WKYT. After you're injured at work, a lot of times the insurance company will attempt to call you, take statements, 
don't speak to them until you speak with an experienced workers' compensation attorney. The insurance company will attempt to settle your case for pennies on the dollar. Before you talk to the insurance company, call us first. Our job is to make sure you get all the money you deserve. Call Morgan, Collins, and Yeast. 1-800-55-WILDCAT. Passion, personalized care, and a mission to serve women and families in Kentucky. We are Frontier Nursing University. Through distance education and clinicals in your own community, become a nurse midwife and share your passion for women and family care. Visit Frontier.edu. Looking for convenient small town family service? Come see us at Central Kentucky Truck Trailer Boat and RV. We are family owned and operated and are conveniently located just off I-75 between Lexington and Richmond. We have a large selection of RVs and pontoons on location. We have been serving our Central Kentucky neighbors for 12 years and we would like to serve you next. Stop in today and let our family serve your family. Central Kentucky Truck Trailer Boat and RV, the Recreation Superstore. I've covered thousands of games over decades. You think you can beat me? Come on. Challenge Dave Baker and play the Hoops Hysteria Tournament Pick'em Game for your chance to win a 65-inch LG 4K Smart TV. Sign up today on WKYT.com. Have something that needs investigating? Email us or call the WKYT Investigates tip line. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. We are rolling our way closer and closer to the weekend, and unfortunately, rain rolling closer and closer to central and eastern Kentucky. But boy, those temperatures are going to stay above normal for this time of year. Look at a very interesting temperature map where we had some rain early in the day, northern and western parts of the area, everybody in the 50s. To the south of that, it is still toasty. It's 72 degrees in Bowling Green, 68 showing up right now into Richmond and into Jackson. We've got some bubbles of warmer air across the entire area. It's going to be hard for many of us to drop below 55 to 60 for an overnight low. Some areas will stay 60 degrees or better. Active spring pattern now setting up. Anytime you get this warm this early in the season, chances are you're going to get some showers and thunderstorms coming at us in rounds over the next several days. And those storms will contain some heavy rains. It's a tropical supply of juice that is very, very early this year to see a big plume coming off the Gulf of Mexico that you could trace back to the Pacific. Defender radar network, nothing across central and eastern Kentucky, though. Look at the rain beginning to pick up here around Bowling Green. What you see around Bowling Green by the middle of the night into early tomorrow morning may show up across parts of the Lexington Metro. So we get two waves of rain coming at us tomorrow, one early in the day and then another late in the afternoon and toward the evening. That supply of moisture across western Kentucky putting down three to four inches of rain so far on the day into parts of southwestern Kentucky where flood warnings are currently out. Tomorrow's forecast. Boy, where you are is going to be the biggest difference uh, between staying in the 60s and then hitting the mid 70s. Shower thunderstorm, one forecast never fits all. That's really the case tomorrow. Shower thunderstorm tomorrow morning. We catch a break. We can spike toward the 70s during that time, especially eastern Kentucky. Bluegrass region may stay a little cooler than that. Then the next round of showers and storms will come on into town. That current flow is right out of the Gulf of Mexico, and it is a juicy one. We've had better than 10 to 12 inches of rain into parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, and Texas. We're not talking about anything like that, but we are talking about waves of showers and storms over the next several days. Thursday through Monday, not going to rain all the time, an inch, two, or three during that four or five day span that we're talking about into early next week. Several dry periods will be in the mix as well. So you're going to get some dry hours in there, and the temperatures, by the way, Stay way, way above where we should be for this time of year. New hour by hour forecast showing that increase in some rain first thing tomorrow morning. Notice how southern and eastern Kentucky we stay dry. Bluegrass region may turn sunny though, middle of the day. Look at the numbers in the eastern parts of the region. We can hit the low 80s tomorrow. You hit the low 80s in eastern Kentucky this early in the season. That is very, very rare to see. Everybody will then turn soggy tomorrow evening into Friday morning with a weak front on top of the area. By Friday afternoon, the numbers are a little cooler compared to where we have been, still above normal. Then by the time we go into the day on Saturday, showers and thunderstorms are increasing. Temperatures on Saturday spike back into the 70s yet again. It's a very spring-like forecast. There's no other way around it. We've set you up with this for the past week, 
Uh, and, you know, something else into the mix, guys, this weekend, it, you know it's spring when the clocks go forward. Mm -hmm. We spring forward Saturday night into Sunday morning. Well, that rain was coming sooner or later, wasn't it? It is, and for the bluegrass region, it arrives tomorrow, then we catch a break, then it comes back. Back and forth. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Chris. You bet. Some tiny outlaws gave police in Florida quite a chase this morning. That's in seven minutes. He's been turned down. Command stop a Hey! Uh, you need a car. I got turned down for credit. Turned down for what? For credit. Sorry, earwax. Turned down for what? Credit. Drive time won't turn you down, regardless of credit. Yeah! Cool. <laughs> Save yourself. Get approved at drive time first. Call, click, or visit. What do these women have in common? They are the staff of Ageless Medical Weight Loss. They've lost a combined 1,300 pounds. The team at Ageless will understand your struggles and celebrate your victories. For a medically supervised, affordable weight loss solution, call Ageless today for a free consultation. All right, come on, it's time to go. Getting more for your money is simpler than you might think. When you shop at Kroger, you get low prices throughout the store, weekly specials, great value from our quality brands, digital coupons, and even fuel points to help you save at the pump. No spin, just savings. The Buy 5, Save $5 event is on. Mix and match items like Bounty Paper Towels, Land O'Lakes Butter, Coca-Cola, and more. Great food, low prices at Kroger. The critically acclaimed, multimedia, award-winning concert spectacular the world has been talking about. Mario, Zelda, Halo, Warcraft, Sonic, Final Fantasy, and many more. Feel the explosive, one-of-a-kind entertainment experience over 10 years in the making. Prepare yourself for Video Games Live. Tickets are on sale now. Choose your seats and print tickets at home at ekucenter.com. All across America, families are coming back to Time Warner Cable for a whole new experience. We came back for internet speed so fast, even the kids are impressed. Oh, she's impressed. We're catching up on movies and shows on demand just as fast as we can watch them. TWC's home Wi-Fi is so strong, we can use all our devices at the same time. Come back today. You'll get 30 meg internet, TV, phone, and more for $89.99 a month. And ask how you could get a $300 reward card. Call now. Considering bankruptcy? Call Atkinson, Sims, and Kermode. Start your bankruptcy for only $78 now. Dial 859-CALL-ASK for your free consultation. Stay connected to the news that matters to you. WKYT. Found some breaking news that we're tracking in Lexington tonight. Police have shut down part of Newtown Pike, and they have surrounded a liquor store in that area. This is a live picture from the scene, and you can tell it is an active scene. This is on Newtown Pike near Georgetown Street. So far, Lexington police have not told us why they have shut down the road or surrounded that store. We want you to keep checking WKYT.com and the WKYT News app for any updates. With another round of crucial primaries coming up next week, Democratic presidential candidates Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders met in Florida tonight for another debate. And much of it focused on immigration. Marley Hall is in Miami with more on tonight's debate. The first tense exchange of the night wasn't between candidates, but between Univision moderator Jorge Ramos and Hillary Clinton. He asked her about the investigation into the private email server she used while Secretary of State. If you get indicted, would you drop out? Oh, for goodness, that is not going to happen. I'm not even answering that question. Immigration was a central topic of the debate. Both candidates promised not to deport undocumented children and to support swift action on reform. If the Congress does not do its job as President of the United States, I will use the executive powers of that office to do what has to be done. I am committed to introducing comprehensive immigration reform with a path to citizenship in the first 100 days of my presidency. Secretary Clinton and Sanders will face off again on Tuesday here in Florida. That's when voters here and in four other states will Will vote in primary elections. Sanders and Clinton offer differing views of Tuesday's Michigan primary. It was a very close race. We've had some of those. I've won some, I've lost some. We have won, including Michigan last night, which some people considered one of the major political upsets in modern American history. Is Donald Trump a racist? 
Both candidates declined a chance to call Republican frontrunner Donald Trump a racist, but said they disagree with his views on Mexican immigrants and his call for a wall along the Mexican border. Marley Hall, CBS News, Miami. And tomorrow, the four remaining Republican candidates will also meet in Miami for another debate. Republican frontrunner Donald Trump is planning another trip to the region this weekend. He's planned a rally in Cincinnati at the Duke Energy Center Sunday at noon. That's two days before the Ohio primary. Trump held a rally in Louisville last week, just days before the Kentucky Republican caucus. Today marks the 40th anniversary of the beginning of a mine disaster that killed 26 men in Letcher County. On March 9, 1976, an explosion ripped through the Scotia mine, killing 15 miners. Another explosion two days later killed 11 more. Investigators say a buildup of methane gas due to inadequate ventilation caused the explosions. Many in the community say they haven't forgotten the disaster. It was something that stuck not only in our memories because of the pain and the experience that we had, it's something that everyone in the country knew. The Scotia mine disaster led to the passage of stricter federal safety requirements and more training for miners. But today, a Kentucky Senate committee approved two bills that would roll back some of Kentucky's mine safety laws. One would end state safety inspections of coal mines, turning over the responsibility to federal inspectors. The other would end mandatory state safety training for mine foremen. New tonight, Kentucky Democrats received some help from President Obama before yesterday's special elections in the state house. Democrats won three of the four seats up for grabs to keep their majority in the House. President Obama recorded a phone message for voters in Hopkinsville asking them to vote for Jeffrey Taylor in the 8th district race. Taylor won his race with 59% of the vote. So far, no one in the Kentucky Democratic Party has taken credit for contacting the president and asking him to record the message. But party chairwoman Sandy Overly said she was thankful for his involvement. The president has had low approval ratings in Kentucky. A group of miniature horses kept emergency crews busy in Florida this morning. Police say the five horses somehow got loose from a home in Broward County. At one point, the horses got close to a turnpike as police tried to round them up. Eventually, police were able to get the horses into a fenced area and back to safety. They say none of the horses were injured. They were going for it. They, they were, were out of there. Charging ahead. <laughs> Well, the question about quarterbacks at UK, Rob, always seems to come up, doesn't it? Well, it does. It came up as the Wildcats opened up spring practice earlier this week. And Cal talks about Jamal Murray. He is more than just a shooter. Sports is next. I'm WKYT's Barbara Bailey, and I stand for Kentucky. How do we put our incredible buying power to work for you? With Power Buy, Power Financing, Power Upgrades, Power Coupons, Free TVs, and more. It's our Power Sellathon for a limited time because nobody beats the rats. Good. Stay, stay, light up. I'd like to take this time. Oh, you Roll over. Roll over. Almost. Roll over. It took Joel Silverman years to become a master dog trainer. Roll over. Good job. But only a few commands to master depositing checks at Chase ATMs. Technology designed for you, so you can easily master the way you bank. Want to make great meals easy? Then you'll want to come to our kitchen makeover event. Look at all you get in this Amana stainless steel package, now $17.99. Plus up to three years zero interest with select packages of free 50-inch TV. Nobody beats P-Rats. Friday's Mega Millions jackpot is $15 million. Toyota's number one for everyone sales event is in full swing at Kentucky's number one Toyota dealer, Green's Toyota of Lexington. Save up to $5,000 off MSRP on new Toyotas with our Green Saver coupon. Special APR offers available, including 0% APR on our most popular models. And get up to $2,000 customer cash on 13 different models. Hurry in for Toyota's number one for everyone sales event. Going on now at Green's Toyota. Great people, great cars, great Green's. Are you tired of juggling your finances and can't afford those remodeling projects? 
Surplus Sales has a huge selection of carpet at unbeatable prices. Come on down to Surplus Sales for some great deals. What we do is not about sickness. It's about living. Because you were made to live and live well. Let us show you how care is supposed to be. Lexington Clinic, your doctors for life. Jimmy Nash Homes is known for the beautiful community of Patch and Wilkes in the reserve at Greenbrier, an estate community in the midst of beautiful horse farms with luscious green space. And we're excited about Andover Club Villas, luxury country club living at its best, and our first ever Jesmond County exclusive community, the Oaks at Cave Springs, soon to be one of Central Kentucky's most stunning neighborhoods. All of our homes in all four communities feature Anderson Windows and Doors, the most trusted name in Windows and Doors. Your dream home starts here with us. We have something for everyone. So come and see us. This Corolla's got a sweet sound system and low APR. No, I don't live far. It's got tons of room. I do own a broom. This is pretty fun. Yeah? I've been thinking of growing a man bun. It's Toyota's One for Everyone sales event with zero for 60 financing plus $500 bonus cash on Corolla or $1,000 customer cash or a $159 a month lease. Thanks, Jan. No, it's Jan. Toyota, let's go places. Heading into the SEC tournament, the honors just keep rolling in for Tyler Eulis and Jamal Murray. Eulis, a first-team Sporting News All-American, Murray named to the all-freshman team. Jamal Murray came into Kentucky with top-notch credentials, as you know, making a name for himself in the Nike Hoop Summit and then with his play in the Pan Am Games. At Kentucky, he has developed his game, and Cal says he's more than a shooter. He's more than a shooter. He's a scorer, but... What we're getting him to do is catch and shoot. And the rest of his game, where he's getting the ball by people, where he's scoring from the foul line, where he's doing those kind of things, have really made him the most efficient player. Now, let me say this. Again, he took 12 shots and scored 22. I think down in Florida, he had 18 points on six shots or something crazy down there. He may be the most efficient guard who's a volume scorer but not a volume shooter. At the beginning of the week, Tubby Smith was named Big 12 Coach of the Year. Today, the Sporting News named him National Coach of the Year. Tubby led Texas Tech to a 19 and 11 record, nine and mark in the nine and nine mark in the Big 12. The last time the Raiders won nine conference games and finished 500 in the league, 2007. Tubby has now won eight National Coach of the Year awards. Anytime you you surpass you know, expectations of prognosticators and other people. There's a satisfaction there, but we know that we that we should be better. It's a tough league. It's the toughest league I've ever coached in. The NAI national brackets are released, and the Georgetown Tigers are the overall number one seed. Pikeville is the two seed in one of the four pods. Campbellsville and Cumberlands are six seeds in their respective brackets. The girls' Sweet 16 opening up in northern Kentucky, Mercer County, and Leslie County. Mercer County, a 41-point loser in this game a year ago. Today was a different story. First quarter, Lyric Houston grabs the loose ball. She puts the Titans ahead 13-1. to Houston had 18 today. Mercer County led it by 30 at halftime. Emma Souter, the rebound, and back up for the basket. Sagan Robbins spotting up and knocking down the three-pointer. It was all Mercer County 68 to 39. And Franklin County faced Shelby County in the second game of the day. Lady Flyers trailed most of the first half until Deja Kilborn made it 1918 Franklin County. That basket started a run. Rebecca Cook before halftime makes it 24 to 19. And the run would continue in the third quarter. It was a 15 to 2 run. Cook again, she had 19 on the day. And Franklin County advances to play Campbell County on Friday. Well, the quarterback situation at Kentucky always seems to be a hot topic, and it came up again Tuesday as the Wildcats opened up spring practice. Drew Barker is the only returning quarterback the Cats have. He started the Vanderbilt and Louisville games, but his game experience is limited. Barker is now joined by junior college transfer Stephen Johnson and freshman Gunnar Hoke. Mark Stoops asked what the timeline is for his quarterbacks. I'd like to have somebody by the end of the spring. Is this a... Yeah, the timeline was 
two months ago. <laughs> uh, I'm not wor really worried about that. I'm going to let it play out, and we'll see how it goes. Um, you know, Drew's taking the first team reps right now, and Steven's taking the twos, and we're rotating the threes. All right, Matt Jones is down in Nashville already. He's next. Negotiating an injury settlement with an insurance company directly without an attorney may seem like a good idea at first. After all, you get the whole pie. But studies by the insurance industry itself found that settlements are much larger when the injured person is represented by an attorney. Hi, I'm Kevin Renfro, the Becker Law Office. Most importantly, even after the attorney's fee is paid, you still get more than settling by yourself. Don't go it alone. Serious, experienced results. Call the Becker Law Office, just dial three. The AFP has had its eye on her for quite some time. We were just waiting for the right moment to move in. The vibe was anything but playful. Go, go, okay. We knew we had to move in fast, but there was a crowd, so we had to play it cool. This is where the years of training paid off. We got the scratch-off ticket to her in the nick of time. We're agents to play, man. People think this job is all fun and games, but we take our fun seriously. That's what being an agent of play is all about. Thank you. We're just doing our job. Put a little play in your day with scratch-offs from the Kentucky Lottery. Fueling imagination, funding education. What's the biggest thing in home comfort? Fayette Heating and Air, the largest HVAC company in central Kentucky. When your system needs service, bigger is better. That's because they have more than 70 vehicles on the road. So there's one near your home 24-7, 365. Call to schedule your complete system checkup, only $59. For expert service day or night, everywhere in central Kentucky. Put a local pro on the case with Case Foundation Repair and Waterproofing. We've been solving all your foundation and water problems with trusted service since 1944. Case Foundation System stabilizes your home's foundation and settlement needs. Our waterproofing systems offer an affordable solution for your basement and crawl space. Case also repairs cracks, bowed walls, and solves drainage problems. With Case's concrete lifting and leveling system, we'll stabilize your porch, patio, and sidewalk. Call for a free estimate and put a local pro on the case. My husband and I do our best to make the world we live in a better place. We recycle, drive a hybrid car, and we love to shop at our local farmer's market. So when it came to where we actually live, we knew we had to get a home loan from someone we could trust. Someone who supports our community and cares about us, not their bottom line. University of Kentucky Federal Credit Union. It's banking, only better. This new DQ chicken bruschetta is a high-end Italian sports car. No, actually, it's oven-hot focaccia bread, a balsamic glaze. It's a high-end Italian romance. No, it, it's chopped tomatoes and herbs. It's a high-end Italian fashion. It's a high-end Italian sandwich. I like sandwich. The new DQ Bakes Chicken Bruschetta, a premium Italian sandwich at a not-so-premium price. Hot out of the oven, only at your DQ. This is fan food, not fast food. The madness is coming. Have something that needs investigating? Email us or call the WKYT Investigates tip line. We've arrived in Nashville here for the SEC tournament. Not surprisingly, there's blue everywhere. Kentucky doesn't even play till Friday, and still over half the fans you see are wearing Kentucky blue. For the Cats, it's a business trip, but as you know, John Calipari doesn't even like these SEC tournaments. If it was up to him, you wouldn't even play in them. But he's learned how much this means to fans. The kind of fans that come to this tournament are, in my opinion, the best UK fans. The people who don't go to Rupp Arena, but who games like this is how they show their fandom. Now, as far as the tournament itself, Kentucky's probably the favorite. I think Texas A&M and Vandy have a shot to win it all. Anybody else would be a big surprise. Watch Mississippi State, though. They're coming from the bottom half of the draw, and I think it'll be an upset, and they will find a way to get to the semifinals and play Kentucky there on Saturday. For now, enjoy the first couple days. Kentucky's good enough that we don't have to play. We can rest and enjoy what I think is the best week of the year, the SEC tournament. I'm Matt Jones, live from Nashville, and this has been Overtime. 
Matt, thank you. Tomorrow, that big blue caravan of folks is going to be heading that the, the way, big probably. big blue mist is heading yeah. down to Nashville. The weather around here tomorrow morning, if you're leaving early, could be a little on the soggy side with a good shot for some showers and thunderstorms. 60 degrees will break out into a little sun. So your emoji may be smiling middle of the day for the weekend, guys. 75 on Saturday. Only drawback will be a little bit of rain into Sunday. Better chance for some showers and thunderstorms during that time. Rob Bromley covering his 50th SEC tournament. No, not quite that. <laughs> <laughs> You've done a lot. Good luck.